Hi, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to set up a combination lock. When the player gets the right combination, you're able to send a message which can open things like doors or lockers or chests to reveal a prize to the player. Let's jump straight in. Okay, so first you're going to place your levers that you want to use uh, on the ground or wall or wherever you need to. Uh, then we're going to highlight them and we're going to add a door behavior. Door plays an animation um, when you interact with it. So we'll go ahead and edit logic. And what we want to do is opening animation will be on and closing animation will be off. Uh, and we can send a message with either open and closing the lever. So we're going to go ahead and um, select our first one. And you can see our animation is triggered with interact. Uh, we've got our animation types, which is on and off. Uh, now we need to send a message um, to all uh, when we open and close it. So for this one here, we're going to do lever one. And we're going to use an argument in this case. And the argument we want is a number. So we'll send a number when uh, it's interacted with. And this is where we can determine uh, the combination if we want it to be up or down. Um, so I'll go ahead and make each one. So we've got uh, lever will send the number one uh, when it's open and send the number zero uh, when it's closed. And we send that to the rule system uh, in order to uh, tell it if it's open or closed. So I'll go ahead and do that for all of them. So for this one here, it's going to be lever.2. And the same thing here, we're going to add a number. And this allows us to uh, determine the combination. So this one will make it so when the lever is down, it will send the number one, and we'll send it to all. Here we're going to do lever number three message argument, we're going to add a number. And we can make this one uh, down as well and make sure we send it to all. And we do the same thing with number four. We just edit logic. We type in uh, lever four, make sure you click with argument. And uh, we're going to add another number. And for this one here, um, we can make this one say uh, it's going to be up. And the last one here, we're going to edit logic. Same thing again, but this one is going to be lever number five. And we're going to add a number. And make sure it's to all. Uh, and this one here, we can make it be down as well. So we've got down, up, and you can switch to ones and zeros depending if you want the combination to be up or down. And this is the only place you need to change a variable uh, in order for you to change a combination. Cool. So now that we've got our, um, our messages, we can send them to the rule system with the variable. So what we can do here is, um, we can do a variable here. Uh, we have like combo one, combo two, combo three, combo four, combo five, um, and they have a specific number. Uh, so what I can do here is add a number, and this one will be for lever one, and do another one for lever two. This one here will be lever three another number for lever four and one more uh, for lever five next we're going to add a rule and we're going to change variable value and we're going to set number value we'll bring this one up here and what we're going to do is use uh, lever dot one we'll zoom in a bit so when the message lever.1 is sent by the lever, 
we're going to change the value of lever one to the message argument. So um, when the lever is pressed and it's up, it will send a value one and change lever one's value to number one. When you push it back down again, it will send the value zero and change this variable to zero because it's all attached to the message argument. And all we do here is duplicate it and we change it to lever two and we're gonna change the value of lever two to whatever the message argument is. And we just need to do that for all five. And we just change it one by one. And now we have all five. So the levers will change each of these values one, one at a time, depending on which lever you press. Now we need something to read those levers. So what we can do here is do a comparison. So we come down to comparison and we can compare numbers. And that will attach this one here. And we want to um, check lever count. So we need to send a message here to check lever count. And what we want to do is compare the value of lever one. And if it equals to one, uh, we want to check uh, lever two. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one. And here we're going to check uh, lever two. And we want to check lever number two. Uh, if it also equals one, uh, we want to check lever three. And we do the same thing. Check lever three. We make sure that lever three is selected. We want to make sure it equals one. And if it is, we will check lever four. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one more time. And we'll check lever four. We make sure we're checking lever four value and make sure it equals one. And the last one we need to do is check uh, lever five. And we'll go ahead and duplicate this one last time. And we will check lever five. And if lever five is also equals one, that means we have a completed task. So the task is now complete and we'll send the message completed task. We do need to send something to check lever count. Uh, so what we'll do here is we will put a message broadcaster down on a numpad and what we can do here is wait for broadcast and the message we will use is um, the lever messages on the actual lever itself and each time you move one of them up or down uh, it will change a variable in a rule system and then check to see if it's the right combination. Um, so we'll send this to the rules and we will use the same message that we said before. So we'll go ahead and send the message to check lever count. So we'll go ahead and put that in. Awesome. Um, next, we want to make sure that the levers can't be changed or moved once the problem is solved. So we'll add a toggle behavior. We want it to be on at the beginning and we want to turn it off when task is complete. So completed a task, we don't need to move these levers anymore. So we want to toggle them off so they can't be changed. And we can also um, put this completed task on a door or on a chest or a locker or wherever you want the um, message to send once the problem has been solved. So if we want this to open, uh, we got puzzle one solved, but we actually used a message um, task 
uh, complete a task. And that will open up the door once the task is complete. So we can go ahead and quickly check to see if this works. So we made the combination to be up, down, down, up, and down. And now you can see our door has opened, our task has been completed. And you can add sounds as well to make it a bit more uh, nicer. So if you wanted to um, just click a component and add play sound, and you can have something like a, a flip, a generic flip, and you can play this sound um, with, uh, where is it? Message to play. And we'll change it so it plays on receive message. And that one here can be uh, lever one, lever two, lever three, lever four, and lever five. So that way each time you um, switch one of these, you'll hear, or just one of those. Um, also, you can send a message to a sound component when it's completed, so the player has some sort of cue to know that it's um, been completed. So we can um, say event objective completed, which is that sound. So we'll edit the logic. And what we can do here is uh, message to play is when task is completed. Cool. So if we go ahead and check that out now. Um, don't know why that played straight away. Let me just quickly double check that. I think I had it on start instead of message. So we'll change that to message received. Now it shouldn't play that when we test that out. There we go. And now when we see we can hear a sound each time we interact with the switch. And when we get the right combination, it plays a sound and we open up wherever we need it to go for getting the combination right. And we can no longer use the uh, switches anymore. I hope this uh, tutorial has been useful. Have a great day.